Why do you use Leger Reads exclusively and what strength do you use? Well, first off, I don't use Leger Reads exclusively. However, I do use Leger Reads a lot. The reason why I use Leger so much is just because of the consistency of them. I love the fact that it won't change a whole lot over the course of a practice session. I also really like the articulation and just overall response of them. Um, there's certain notes and whatnot, especially like C with the octave key. That note just doesn't really work very well on Legers, I find. And then also for me, because I'm playing on a more resistant setup, to get that round warm sound that I want, I have to play on a harder read and that forces the low register to take a little bit more air and sometimes I have some response issues. Right now on Soprano, I'm using a Leger Signature Series Strength 4 paired with a Summer Concept. I'm finding that that setup works pretty well for me right now. However, it is pretty resistant. On Alto, I also use the Selmer Concept, and I've sort of been back and forth between the Signature Series and the French Cut that just came out. I find that a 4 French Cut is still a little bit soft, so I'm actually using a 375 Signature Series for Alto right now. How do you grow a music account of Instagram or YouTube? The biggest thing I would say is to not make your number one goal to grow. You should have other motivations to do it, whether that's educational content or just entertainment or just because it's really interesting and fun to do for you. I think you'll find if the whole reason you're doing Instagram or YouTube is just to grow, you'll get burnt out and bored pretty easily. Just be consistent with whatever you're posting and have fun with it. Make sure it's something that your audience is gonna enjoy and that it's also something that you enjoy making. For me on Instagram, over the last year, I've really tried to be a little bit more transparent on there. A lot of Instagram is just posting something fast, high and loud that's perfect and took a hundred takes to do. And that's not really the reality of what we do day to day as saxophonists or musicians, whoever you are. On YouTube, it's really just a game of consistency. I've really tried to put out a video on YouTube about once a week. I know that eventually it'll grow and I've obviously seen growth. I'm now at about 830 subscribers, I think. And that's way more than I had at the beginning of the year when I started this thing. It's really cool to see the growth. It's really been nice to meet you all. And I hope that it continues to grow, but that's not really my main focus. It's to make stuff that I wanna make and that's the whole point of all of this. What is the best soprano classical mouthpiece and where can I find a used concept? Well, you kind of answered your own question there. I personally really enjoy using the summer concept on soprano and I know a lot of other people do. There are plenty of other great mouthpieces and I suggest finding a retailer somewhere near you that you can go try different ones. Even some of the same model of mouthpieces, mouthpiece to mouthpiece, they're gonna sound different and feel different. I highly recommend just going and trying out a few different ones even of the same model. How do I stand out in college auditions? Well, the first thing I would do is, before you even have those college auditions, reach out, email the professor in a very professional, formal manner, and try and just get to know them. Make sure that they know your name so that when you step into that college audition, it's not the first time they're seeing you or hearing about you at all. The other thing I highly recommend when it comes to college auditions is have questions ready. At the end of those auditions, when you're done playing, they wanna get to know you just as much as you wanna get to know them, so, have questions ready, make yourself memorable, and the biggest thing is just for them to get to know who you are, and that'll help you stand out. Can you do music at UT without getting a music major? Short answer, yes. There are plenty of things for you to do if you're an engineering major, business major, whatever. Anyone's allowed to be in the bands. I have a whole video about that, which I'll link up here. That will just get you started with that whole topic. There's saxophone non-major ensemble. Uh, you can be in the bands just like me. Um, you can also take one-on-one -on -one lessons with the TAs that are great musicians and lovely people. What a lot of people end up doing is being in the Longhorn Band, which is the marching band here at UT. I think LHB is made up of probably like 65 to 70% non-majors, so people who aren't getting music major degrees. What are some good things to practice with region coming up pretty soon? Funnily enough, I also have a video talking about this, which I'll link up here. To give you a brief synopsis on that video, the number one thing I would do is practice performing, whether that's for your dog, your cat, your parents, uh, your band director at lunch, whenever that may be. You need to practice the process that you're gonna be doing on that audition day. So the number one thing you can do is practice performing. Warm-up routine? My warm-up changes every day depending on how much time I have and I really like the variability with it. I would get really bored if I did the same thing every single day, but I think the, the big main things to keep in your warm-up routine every day is mouthpiece pitch exercises, some sort of overtone exercises, long tones, articulation, single and double tonguing, and then scales. You can do as little or as much of those five things as you want, but I think as long as you're getting those five things in, that's gonna be ideal for you as a warm up and just growth in terms of fundamental playing. Things you should do differently when playing soprano versus alto. I think the main thing for me is just to always think about that equal circle of pressure around your embouchure when I'm playing soprano it's easy for me to get very vertically focused. And so just engaging my corners 
um, and not being lazy with that will really help not only just the fatigue while you're playing, but um, it just increases that round sound. I don't know if anyone else has a similar experience to me, but when I go from soprano to alto sax, I feel like my alto playing gets way better just from playing soprano right before. Um, not really the opposite, it probably gets worse that way, but if I play soprano and then I play alto, I feel like my alto playing is way better. I actually think for my band audition this year, I warmed up on soprano and then ended up playing my band audition on alto just because of that weird like psychological or voicing fix i don't even know favorite snack hmm. i'd probably have to go with goldfish the rainbow kind what are you most excited for musically or educationally in your future there's a lot to be excited for the future but there's also a lot to be nervous about i plan on going to grad school for sax from performance i'm pretty nervous for all of those auditions and just that whole process but it'll be exciting to see where I end up for the next two or three years, however long that takes. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do after that. I know I'm gonna take a few military band auditions. I'm currently in the process of taking the Navy audition here in November, but we'll see where life takes me. There's a lot to do and a lot to learn. I think that the biggest thing for me is just to continue doing as many things as I can and it'll take me to wherever I land. How's oboe going? Oh, good question. I forgot about oboe. I haven't made an oboe video. Oboe's good. I feel like I'm getting better at it, definitely. There's a lot of back pressure, which that's just oboe, comparatively to saxophone. The fingering system's pretty similar to saxophone. Certain things are really weird, like C to D, just the half hole thing is very odd to me. You don't get things like that on saxophone. Overall, just the reed thing is very odd as well. I can't believe how fast you'll go through a reed when it took you so long to make it. Um, just the specialization with all that's really cool. It's very unique how you can sort of get good at making your own reads for you. Oba video soon. Does it matter much if you leak air while you play, but can still maintain a good tone? I would say yes. There's obviously something going on here with your embouchure that maybe needs to be patched up or fixed. Yes, we get tired, but I think that I play a lot every day and I don't really get that. And that's mainly just because I'm used to it. The more you can get used to playing for long periods of time, the better that face and muscles are going to be. It's like any muscle in your body going to the gym and working it out. Yes, you can make a good tone with a little leak in your embouchure, but that's still going to affect the performance. I don't think if you did a performance like that and you heard the little leaking air the whole time, you'd be very satisfied. So try and get that patched up the best that you can. Do you think doing content creation has changed your career goals? No, I think that Content creation has changed my mindset about a lot of things. I really enjoy the content creation stuff. It gives me a different outlet to be creative in. I love cameras and that whole thing. It's a lot of fun to me and just a little niche thing that I really enjoy. I also think just bringing exposure to what we do as musicians is a really cool thing. I'm not sure there's really a future in me doing content creation as like a job. However, someone like Dr. Mike Librius just got a full-time position at UT being a professor, but also Part of his job is to do content creation, so maybe there's a future in that sort of stuff. I don't know. So I don't think content creation has changed my career goals, but it definitely has sort of changed my life. What made you choose the saxophone initially? Let's wind it back to sixth grade. One of my best friends who played soccer with me, his mom had a bunch of kids in band and he was going to do band, so I was like, okay, I guess I'll do band. So I went to try your instrument night. That was a, a day in fifth grade where you go and it's a room full of saxophones and clarinets and every instrument you can think of. You pretty much just get to test them out with a, a lesson teacher who knows what they're doing and they can sort of guide you in the right direction to what instrument you wanna pick. For saxophone and percussion, there was actually an audition. It was pretty much you just walking in and playing on the neck and mouthpiece just to see if you could get a good sound just because there was a lot of people who wanted to play those two instruments. I ended up choosing saxophone and I didn't really try that many other instruments. I think I only tried trumpet. I don't know what made me want to choose saxophone, but that's where I ended up and I'm quite glad I did. How often do you work on slash shave your reeds? In spite of the leger conversation that we had at the beginning of this video, I am currently breaking in a box of three and a half blue box van dorans i'll link dr page's read video up here just because i'm pretty much just going to say that exact script i wouldn't shave your reads a whole lot right at the beginning wait a week or so after you've broken them in and they feel pretty solid flatten the back that's pretty much all you need to do just make sure the back is flat so that it lays flat on the table of the mouthpiece if the reeds warped and not flat then it's not going to sit flat on the mouthpiece and there's really no point in playing it. Aside from that, there's a Michael Lowenstern ear spasm video that talks about the sort of specifics that you can do on the actual 
like read. I do some of that, but not a whole lot. What do you plan on doing with your degree? Well, like I said, I'm getting a degree in music education because at the end of the day, we're all gonna end up teaching. I find that that's gonna be a valuable part of me as a person. If I can teach someone how to do something, even if it's not music, that's a very helpful skill to have. I do plan to go to grad school for music performance and then we'll see where that takes me. I can see myself doing a lot of things, teaching private lessons full time, being in a military band if that's the path that that takes me, but we'll see. Having trouble with Ebear Movement 1, how can I get my articulation speed up to tempo? Articulation is a hard thing, especially for me, and specifically in Movement 1 articulation, up into that altissimo to get that A, it's something that we all struggle with. I think just, again, consistency with articulation day to day is going to be the best thing for you. Practice different articulation patterns with scales, uh, arpeggios, uh, thirds, fourths, all those different intervals. Remember that articulation is about 90% air and 10% of the actual tongue. Try and keep that tongue movement minimal so that the air can take care of the rest of it. What are some good pieces for music slash LHB auditions at UT? Well, if you're talking about auditioning for an actual music major, there's recommended pieces on the, the website there. For LHB, they give you a packet for you to work on. If you're talking about band auditions, there's also a packet that they give you for that. I wouldn't worry too much about the specifics of that. They give you plenty of information for those types of things. What's some advice or skills you learned that you'd wish you'd known earlier about classical saxophone? If I were to pick one thing, it'd probably be tongue awareness just because it affects a lot of things like pitch and tone. Getting the back of the tongue super high, it's a lot like the clarinet. Where can I find the subscribe button? 